Are you ready? Are you ready to pot it up? Let's go. Let's have fun. Pecast it. This is the Simply Youth Ministry Podcast with Doug Fields. I think it's going to be a four-shoulder touch. <laughs> Matt McGill. Nothing says loving like a muffin. Josh Griffin. The internet is a hotbed of activity. And Jana Sardi. Podcast! The show starts now. It's day. Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Uh, is this 114? 114. I know it's saying it's 114 because 113 is up there and they didn't even know we were doing a show today. So, it's 00. Remember? We had 00. Anyway, welcome to the Simply Poetry Podcast. Matt McGill, Jenna Sardi, um, um, Josh, Josh Griffin with an I at the end, and Douglas Montgomery Fields here. If you have some. Um, if you have some questions, you can send them to sympodcast at gmail.com. Very sick, Doug. You know what? I have been sick for the last couple of days. I don't get sick that often, but I am achy. I have been sucking down Advil like crazy. Achy. But here's what I do when I'm sick. I pretend I'm not. <laughs> Sit around. No, I pretend I'm not. Like I got up. I went exercising in the last couple of days. I'm just... Um, just try to fake my body into thinking because yeah. I feel it like is you drink yellow stuff. Yeah, the placebo effect is more after some water. Just think yourself. Oh, well, but this morning I could. I, my alarm went off to get up and go exercise, and I wound up taking more abs. I've got cold remedy stuff in my pocket. <laughs> You're that guy who has the whole bag. <laughs> 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 he like walks around with emergency <laughs> packets <laughs> and like. Two today. <laughs> See? <laughs> today. Oh, I don't want to be sick. You need five hour energy with like a bottle of like top <laughs> <laughs> uh, would that be what? And now we're all going to catch it. Thanks for calling a podcast. Well, Jana, you were away for a couple weeks. <laughs> You were away for a couple weeks in Australia. How was that? It was great. Thank you. Oh, it was okay. very fun. Yeah. 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 We were, I know. What was it, people? We were planning on we're on vacation, show, too. Matt bailed. I don't know. Did I bail? Yeah, you bailed. I don't think I did. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I was talking about that night. <laughs> I had to shave his beard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That probably did take a while. Anyway. Yeah, so um, I had to use the leeches. Ah. Uh, uh, oh. You can't do that. You yeah. have your own razor. No, I do. Should you get new glasses, razor? too? No, but I need new ones. Okay, we don't really care. Yeah, fungus from your face. No, uh-uh. All right, let's get into this. Um, here is here is something that we have to address today, and we have to either decide we're going to do it or we're going to we just need to let the thing go. Okay, because we we mentioned the last time we were together about a weight. Lost deal, oh, yeah. and we have. Let me just tell you, we have. We have Matthew Matthew McNutt, uh, who was on the Biggest Loser uh, number one. I got excited because our friend was on the Biggest Loser last night. Did you guys watch it? Yes. You know her? Yeah. No, it was okay, it's okay. Okay. So, um, we taped it. I haven't watched it. Okay. Oh. Recorded. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. He's got a cassette. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Linguistics. <laughs> no, just, just wait. Just wait. Now I'm on the lookout for sometimes you say Xerox or something. Anyway, Matthew McNabb, who is the biggest loser one, is in to help us. He's yeah. in coaching. He's got rules. He could really make it legit. That's fun. Yeah. Um, so that's one. There was a youth pastor. Oh, team is just awesome. There was a youth pastor on this newest edition of the Biggest Loser. I'm not sure we was. Right. So didn't he get voted off? He got voted off, but I bet you we could get in touch with him and he could help us as well. Yeah. Oh. Here's a guy, Josh <laughs> Maxwell, um, says, I want in on the weight loss challenge. I'm currently 303 pounds and could use to lose a lot. Let me know. Um, Dusty Smith from Marshall, Texas. He's the one that got the whole thing started. Um, here's a guy, John Cole. He says, in an effort to keep Josh, Matt, and my brother in youth ministry, Dusty, alive forever, I love you guys. I hereby pledge fifty dollars to the weight loss contest winner fund. Mm. Yeah. If you put a link on the SYM podcast site, I will pay it that way. If that doesn't work, I'll just send a check to Sally <laughs> back and put it at attention, Jana Sardi. Oh, Don't want it to end up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I would just cash it. 
So here's um, Adam Lehman says the award could be. He says I'm weighing in at 236. I could lose a ton by the SYMC conference. The award could be three months paid for personal trainer, a year of the live curriculum for the Biggest Losers Church, a week's worth of housing in Southern California to be used by the Biggest Loser, refund of the SYMC conference. A copy of every Doug Fields book ever published, cool. an Xbox 360. Love it. Winner gets a percentage mm-hmm. of Griffin's royalties from 99 Fox. <laughs> Four dollars you can have. Right. And then That's here's perfect. Wesley Miller says three. Uh, the three youth pastors and secretary recently participated in the Biggest Loser Staff Edition. Right. They got sponsors for every pound they lost to support the missionary couples they support. Uh, June through August lost a total of 147 pounds wow. and raised over $17,000. Wow! So anyway, we mentioned it once. We got a lot of we got a lot of action. Yep. You two big boys. I mean, what do you say? Well, I, I I don't like any of those deals there. I mean, I can come up with some kind of prize. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I'd really like to get in on this. Like, is it by the SYM? Conference? I think we do weigh in at the SYM conference. Does SYM sponsor the prize? Yeah. <laughs> we can figure that out. Yeah. But, but, but wait. Here, here's the deal. The here's the deal. Power and stand in those you glass boxes and you always enter the, the weight contest. Yeah. You lose pretty good, then you gain it back. So you're in. You're in. There's no question yeah. that you're in. Well, the question is. He starts, and then he just kind of. You, you, so I know that you oh. that, but can you do it? I can please record that and play that over and over and over again because that's like what you preach. What do you think? We have to decide right now whether you, by the end of the show we got to decide. Okay. All right. Um, but I think it'd be fun to like twelve weeks out. Your life isn't more stressful than Griff. No, Griff is. Anyway, here's Matt, Mike Richardson, Gainesville, Ohio. Says, Doug, did you resign to try out the house church gig that Matt did? Just kidding. I pray that God gives you clarity. No, I don't think you're paying attention. You said not at home. Mike Richardson also said. Um, <laughs> you're saying the people you work with. Come on. No. Okay. Okay. How many times do we have to have this conversation? Um, here's what I love, though. We had two people come in. You've been listening. Jeff Hawkins has been li- oh, yeah. listening since episode zero zero. Oh yeah. yeah. Look at he sent a photo. Oh, so it. nice. Been listening yeah. since episode zero zero, mostly on time, except during busy summers. Catch up in September. Thanks for all you do. I love it. Nice, That's great. That's Jeff. Send you no, I want to set this aside. <laughs> what about Google Wave advice? Yeah. Oh, brother. Uh, those are price books right now. This is from our buddy Andy Disher. Andy is a yep. is a regular, yeah, regular on um, podcast, yeah. also Twitter, different things like that. Just want to drop you a line. First off, I'm literally counting down the days until the Simple Youth Ministry Conference. I'm looking forward to getting together with the team and hanging out, catching up, laughing, learning. And helping out. Hey, by the way, there is a steak dinner contest. Oh, yeah. I an, email, that. an email went How out. That, that seems contrary to the weight loss. No, well, little piece of well you'll get this much. Yeah. But here's the deal. So, and I'm a little confused because I thought it was just for our podcast listeners. Oh, but it's everybody? Well, Andy sent out an email to the whole youth That's ministry right. list. So, got no love for podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. There is, if you've already signed up, you can still enter in, and the promo code is Eat Steak. Okay, it's Eat Steak. We're going to do a drawing like we did last yeah. year. But Josh and I were talking yesterday, because uh, do you know Josh and I were supposed to go to lunch yesterday at Rouge Chris yeah. by one of our volunteers because I stood on my head at the beach and yeah. he didn't think I could? Yeah. He lost the bat, said he would take us off Rouge Chris. You stood on your head? Yeah, okay. did a headstand. Yeah. So, With your hand? No, yeah. head. Yeah. Like did a handstand on my head. And then you went like this. Yeah. And, and then, then I juggled. Um, For how long? So anyway, Bruce Chris, I'm all excited about it. I actually yeah. wore Ooh, decent okay. shoes. You wore fancy clothes. You had all these like was it a Did they match? <laughs> 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 They're beating. Native yeah, American. Josh is killing me that oh, uh, keeping the Native yeah. Americans busy, huh? <laughs> so I dressed up a little bit. Tiff <laughs> who takes us out, dressing up. Yeah. Josh shows up in tennis shoes. But he did have a collared shirt on. Button-down shirt? So anyway, we find out Ruth's Chris isn't open for lunch. 
so we go to this place overlooking the ocean. No, we went to Pelican Hill. Oh, that's Pelican nice. Pelican Hill Grill. Really? Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Anyway, took a picture of Josh and I with steak plates. Yep. Had the filet. It was delicious. <coughs> well, anyway, Andy, Andy says uh, the last few weeks have been challenging times <laughs> for here. I wrote and rewrote my resignation letter only to delete it every time. It was on my last legs, getting tired of double standards, having people sweep issues under the rug, and just how some people can be two-faced. That being said, God brought me around. The place still hasn't changed, nor have the people, but my attitude has. Mm. Yeah, my thoughts and prayers go out to every youth pastor that is going through a tough time of pain, doubt, fear, and the future. I discovered once that I changed my attitude, it got a little easier to deal with. Also, the fact that I'm not going to be in this place forever helps out, too, because forever is really a long time. Having fellow team members, Matt McCage, to call on any time was slash is an amazing blessing as well. Again, I said time and time again, it's also incredible to know and hear that we are not in this alone. Oh. I love that. That's, That's cool. cool. I love that. Who was that from again? Just no. <laughs> Andy Disher. Oh, that was good. Yeah. That's great. Really, what a good email. Yeah. But Come eat steak with us. You know, when he's talking about team member Matt McCage, one of the things that group has, has done in um, group slash simple youth ministry yeah. has done is um, Matt McCage has his own cell. We make the cell phone available. If you have questions about the conference or the cool. the live curriculum, we just call and talk to him. I, it's a wonderful thing. I love it. I'm glad it's his cell phone and not mine. No, it's, it's cool that somebody's phone. available. This dude, he is, it's all for he's the guy. youth workers. You have a question, you want to talk about anything, you can call. I love it. Um, this is from Lyle Detwiller. Do the way that my Twitter. Lyle Detwiller and from... one of our other conferences, you can just call Hannah and get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, man. Uh, Lyle Detwiller Youth Pastor, Mission Valley Christian Fellowship in San Diego. I don't hear much about San Diego. He says, hi, guys and ladies. Just wondering your thoughts on bands and kids. Broad subject, I know. More specifically, how concerned are you with what your kids yeah. listen to? Yeah. I just saw a kid's Twitter about a show this weekend. I looked at the band. It's, it's one I've seen on my kids' T-shirts. When I looked at the lyrics, I found the F word in half their album. The band playing with them has lyrics that could be heavily camouflaged with Christian themes. <laughs> I don't know what that was up there. That's almost ground. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm working hard to breathe. <laughs> the kids speak of the lead singer of the second band like he's on the same plane as Jesus, so the subject is nearly sacred to him. I texted the parent to see what he thought. His kid's response was that many kids from the group were going... I feel like the subject is a dead horse that I continue to beat year after year. I'm tired and the horse doesn't seem to move. Any creative ways to help with this matter? Or maybe I'm overreacting. I was raised in Nazarene, so I do have a tendency to write a rule for everything. Good for that you. was nice to admit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Nazarene. Well, it's, it's, it would be more on the fundamental side of no dancing, I no drinking, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. And no premarital sex because it might lead to dancing. Oh, you know, that type of thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Yeah. So, what do you think, Josh? That's a really tough question. I think every Christian is really different. Um, you have you have a lot of political issues at play, you have a lot of parental issues at play. Um, in our current setting, um, we try to model good music with clean lyrics. If we ever were to have a dance, which I realize not everybody can do that, but if we were to have a dance, we'd be very selective about the music. Um, you know, I think every once in a while we might hit a gray area that's a little bit of trouble, but... But, like, we have a DJ at some of our events, but it's our own staff person who yeah. DJs because we want to be in control of some of that and not yeah, have we, it be questioned. Yeah, we've had to cut songs off, and you know, some some we had an iPod before the service playing, and we're like, oh my goodness, and it switched quick, and some well-meaning people think the line is way over here, and we set it kind of over here. But I know in a lot of cases, you know, music if it's not Christian, you can't listen to it. So that's a we're not in that we're not in that boat, and I I don't enjoy that boat to be honest. But there's a lot of really bad music out there, yeah. really tough. 
about career as things. So as a youth pastor, do you, I guess the question then becomes, do you try to keep rules of what they can and can't listen to, or do you, with there being bad music, do you teach them discernment skills? See, what I would say rather than go after the music, we would go after the heart, we would go after yeah. the, some purity issues, we would go after a lot of things that hopefully would want to do they would want the music to change. I don't know that we would have a message on your music is bad, you know, and do a three week right. series on how black eyed peas is a good food to listen to. But we would talk about <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> But we would talk about all the issues that those songs talk about, and, yeah. and we wouldn't be afraid to say that. When so why not a three-week series on discernment? Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, yeah. But there's other things to talk about that you can you can pick music without singling, singling it out. out. And not that and and you, do, you do that not because you're trying to duck the issue and be um, uh, afraid to tackle it. You do that because there's better issues, there's deeper issues, there's more important things to talk about. Than Hey, listen to this song from this. This one is garbage in, garbage out, blah, blah, blah. Right. I mean, to me, there's there's other things you can do. I mean, I think it's great to share from your own experience, you know, and that's, that's, that helps and speaks more. You can teach on your love for Metallica. I was going to say the same oh, thing. That's yeah. an interesting conundrum, too. Like, what you listen to? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay for you, but it's not, you know, you Twitter about something, you're telling your students it's okay. It's on your Facebook status, the concert you went to. and Right, right. Well, I imagine this guy, you know, Right, he's going to throw a line a little bit, but you know, yeah, yeah, Lady Gaga, <laughs> something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this this is not a music issue, though. Well. I mean, we played a yeah. clip of the MTV Music Awards, or the yeah, and we had a clip of Taylor Swift and Kanye in that little battle they had, which was really awesome. Yeah. But in that clip, there was some pretty suggestive outfits that people were wearing. Well, we were okay with that because we were teaching a much deeper point. But I wouldn't want to play a music video that glorified and objectifies right, right. a woman's body. So I mean, right. I think it's a highly subjective issue. Your church culture really matters. And I and here's the bottom line: we don't want our kids listening to crappy music. Yeah. Yeah. So we just might define that a little differently and go after it a little bit differently. But yeah, it's a huge influence. It's really important to them. You well, you teach them. kids to think. Yeah. You. You've yeah. done them well, whether they change their mu music right now or not. You're teaching them to think a little bit because the discernment issue then becomes about what movies do they see, what right, right. what television yeah. shows they watch. Yeah. You know. we, we just this past week in our happy series, we talked about happy or the pure in heart. One of the action steps could have been it wasn't. This would be nice afterthought, but could have been maybe pure in heart for you means you need to really evaluate what you're yeah. watching in the yeah. movie theater. Maybe what's in your iPod. If that's not pure, and teach them to go after purity and holiness as opposed to this music is wrong. Yeah. 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 Well, the last thing he said there, what, well, not the very last, but near the end, where he says, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. To me, that's discipleship. I mean, if you're, that's going to be happening in any area of discipleship. Like yeah. You're gonna, you want to do this, and you want to do that, and you, know, you want to help them grow. But yeah. the returns are really little. Well, yeah, it's but slow. It also, it's like a long process, so the returns are slow. Yeah. So you have to be, you have to know yeah. that that's a constant conversation, and not just. And not always just a group conversation. Yeah. Sometimes it's an individual conversation. Right. You know, I can remember kids being you know, one of our student leaders being all excited. He thought this song was so funny, and he was passing around the headphones for people to listen to it. And I walked up, and then he became embarrassed about. It. I said, oh, let, me, "Let me hear what you're having them listen to." And no, 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 I had a conversation with this guy individually. It was yeah. after everybody left. Yeah, I said, hey, let's just talk about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's part of, you, you know, you said discipleship. That's Richard Bed. Yeah. Um, this is from Tom Foss. F-O-Z. Tom Foss. Um, <laughs> would like to know how you guys structure your small groups. Are they in-house or out in houses within the community? How do you keep leaders accountable? What does your training look like? Now, um, that's an interesting thing. Or they out in houses. Yeah, they in house or out in houses. 
<laughs> could we, because we have so much written on this, yeah. I mean, we can, how do you keep leaders accountable? What does your training look like? Matt and I did a thing called Small Groups from Start to Finish that really has everything in it. There's what, nothing, nothing. can you do this in one minute? Answer this in one minute? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is what we do. Do you want some time to think about no, it? No, we're good. We start our small group year now five weeks in the refinery in our church building. So, We've enjoyed time together, a little with our leaders for dinner, and a large group time with everybody together. We break off in a small group. Leader training is two hours in September, and then ongoing during those leader dinners, we do a little training as well. Um, we break off and go into houses in the community as soon as we can. Last year was five weeks in. This year is or last year was ten. This week is five. Next week might be three weeks into the year. We want to get into houses because they're relational and fun and great. We divide people up by gender and grade. So uh, Perfect. <laughs> why, why do you say next year's three weeks? Uh, I, it's for me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be home on Tuesday. I'm, I'm out. This is my tenth night in a row, or ten, whatever it is, tenth week in a row to miss Tuesday when I'm at home. Yeah. Well, so, plus I think you're kind of like you originally did last year to get, yeah, to get all your leaders yeah. on the same page, and it kind of it was just that time of in our ministry, you know. We cut it half this year. It was very healthy. It's been great for us. The dinners have been fun. The trains have been really neat. I post all those on my blog too. If you want to read some of the things we've been doing, more than that, well, that's uh, But this but, year it didn't feel as much of retraining. Yeah. It was kind of reminding and totally. reminders and tips and ideas and a lot of veteran and rookie sharing it's been really good for that yeah. part of it's just selfishly for me I can't be out so much on all of October well let's say if it wasn't selfish for you right now is three weeks enough no five is great okay so yeah. get somebody else to do the yeah, Tuesday five nights and five yeah. Yeah, five I'll do the Tuesday, Tuesday night for you okay being a volunteer yeah. why do you yeah. like them so much part of it why is I like what why do you like the group and the big group well, I think it has, I think it gives, it by doing five weeks, it gives Josh a face into training the leaders. Um, it builds community early on. I yeah. think those first few weeks anyway are like, I don't like my small group or I didn't get this yeah. information. It just, it gives a little bit of time to yeah. well, get everything so organized. Yeah. That if, yeah. if we got to take a, you know, if we consider small groups in the home an A and at the, at the building a B, Five weeks of a B, I think, is, is so doable. Yeah. It's so funny, though, because the yeah. energy, though, of our students is like, I mean, it's crazy as yeah. they start showing up at 7 o'clock. They like to be together, too, and, and uh, for a period of time. I don't think they'd like that forever, but I think they like being together. Well, for a one of the reasons, too, is we can connect the next step from the weekend really easily. Like, on, on a Sunday yeah. morning, I can say, show up at Tuesday at 7 o'clock. I'll get you in a group. That's the next step you need to take. If you're here on the weekend and you're That's in a large group, awesome, come on Tuesday night. So rather than find a home, try to sign up, good luck, we hope you have a GPS. Now it's like, no, come back to this building, our, yeah. our church building, and that's good. Smaller. It's cool. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So if it's better for the ministry, it's five weeks and three weeks. It is. Figure that out. It is. Yeah, yeah I feel a little tired. Yeah. Well, let me ask you another question. Yeah. Is yeah. there still a decline in energy and attendance in January, February? Absolutely. We're at 90% attendance right now. now. Yeah, because what I was going to say is maybe that's the time you bring back the three weeks. Interesting. Everybody together. And junior high did that last start. year in January. They loved it. Yeah. Three weeks then or five weeks then. That was tough. That was, I remember that always being tough. Yeah. We go from 90 to, back, to yeah. Yeah. I mean, the next, the next the after Easter was always really good because that was just Oh, yeah. Like yeah. kids singing after camp. They're just paying back. It's awesome. And then the decline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got a, a question from Michael Marshand, youth minister of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Peachtree, Georgia, Peachtree Hello, City, Michael? Georgia. Michael, uh, it's Hello, a good question about balancing ministry and money. But what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to put it in this pile. Now that I think we have enough for a marriage and family show, we have oh, wow. we have five questions. So right. now I'm going to get Kathy, and we're going to do a little marriage and family. Quick update. Podcast. Matt, are you going to get in on this weight competition? I thought you were going to make an announcement about your family or something. How are you feeling about it? Have you been thinking at all? You feeling you lost the weight over there? Are you there? Mental toughness? Yeah. Just checking in. All right, go back to question. Okay. Well, we're halfway through the show. Okay. All right. What are you <laughs> this is from Matthias Rosbrew. Oh, wow. Um, youth pastor in Bethel Baptist Church. Uh, Doug and Happy Crew. 
old school man. You've been in student ministry for a long time and have many years of experience and quote unquote knowledge. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> put <laughs> Matt, you know, this is Matt sitting around, you, um, around the table with you. What have you seen change in student ministry and in your eyes, thoughts, dreams, visions? What do you foresee student ministry to look like in 2012, 2015, 2020? Oh, wow. Well, you know, when I do, wow. when I speak at conventions, usually in the question and answer time, there's usually somebody who is more of a college age or seminary student. Says, what is the future of, of youth ministry? And I've always had trouble answering those because, yeah. you know, in almost 30 years of youth ministry, it always comes down to, you know, this is my simple answer, kids, adults, and Jesus. I think those three will always be the constant, you know, so if you are focusing on how do I destroy my tent? Leaving on the table, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if you keep going back to how do we, how do we love on kids, how do we find more adults to love on kids, and how do we point them to Jesus, you know, whether it is Google invites one year or Facebook or slideshows or gross games or you know all online yeah. curriculum to me the the methods continue to change and will change as we progress but it always comes boil to me in 20, 2020 I'm my thought well, is 2020 will be there you go well, yeah. relational cycle yeah. hopefully <laughs> There's a, if someone wants to Google it now, there's a good post on the YF blog last week about youth ministry in 2017. Just thought that was interesting. Yeah, what did they say? It was, it kind of felt like what it should be today. Why kind of felt like he, he was, no, I forget what the other one was, but projecting like his hopes for his ministry today in the future. Like, I hope I can build towards this and this is what I think it's going to be. Um, yeah, I don't, nothing stood out except one. Sorry, there was like 10 things, but. The one that stuck to me that I agreed with was that the ministry should be more missional, more service projects, more socially minded. I actually think that's happening. We're I know. I feel right like now. that's been happening. So I think that one's kind of tracking. Yeah. That was the, it was an interesting blog post. Anyone want to look it up? Yeah. Interesting enough for number one on a ten page. Yeah. Or was it interesting the title? What you finished? Title was like. super interesting, and then it triggered me. I was like, wow, same exact question. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Who knows? I mean, depending on one, uh, here's another one that it was on like you need to be able to defend your faith and apologetics and the importance of you know the emergence of other religions and them fighting with Christianity and all that. Yeah. It seems like there's a technology piece there though. I mean, you nodded at it with Facebook, but there's like embracing the current technology and being aware of it and using it as a tool, but then also not letting that isolate students. You know, because I think students can kind of isolate themselves from that, so engaging them past that seems yeah. like, I don't know, it feels like for us we've gone from like no cell phone to cell phone to email to no email to Facebook to whatever, you know, so there is something that you have to adapt to that. Well, churches are, churches will be very slow to adapt to something like Facebook and, I mean, if, if we're counting attendance, if, our, if my youth ministry is somewhat judged on attendance and I'm pointing people towards an online experience, does that count towards my attendance? And the, how does that, you know, churches are going to have a hard time without gathering people together to quantify that as good ministry. Yeah. There's a lot of good ministry that happens without being in this small group setting or being in this large group setting. Yeah. I think the church, a church needs to, to lead the way. A youth ministry needs to lead the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they will. What is the thing you've been Twitter about lately? The glow? Yeah, that's oh, really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's a, new, it's a new thing. I just got it. And it's a, uh, actually, uh, Doug Sabal said, no, I don't know anything it's about it. It's All it's I do know is, though, I have I am on Facebook. <laughs> Jana hasn't accepted me as a friend. And he has an iPhone. Oh, Boyer. Twitter boyer. Most people are Twitter boyers. Oh. How come you haven't accepted me as a friend on Facebook? I actually have not been on Facebook in, since I've been back. Honestly, that's the truth. Doug, I, I did it while you were away. Actually, maybe I have been once. That's it. I know, I have not been on Facebook. I don't, I don't look at your page on Facebook and we're totally friends. <laughs> <laughs> your Facebook kind of sucks because it's just <laughs> Yep, my Twitter's and blog posts. Yeah. 
Yeah, but not because, lot. yeah, like you don't post pictures, you don't post. No, people, other people do. They, a lot of, there's probably a couple hundred pictures now. People tag you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, Bible Glow is, I mean, I don't know. It's messy. It's messy. It's messy. spray paint. Spray paint is all they have. Okay. Glow Bible. Um, Bible Glow. Okay, Glow Bible. It's, it's really interesting. Okay. It's got great resources as far as. It's visually really cool. But what is it? Stop. It's a Bible okay. with, uh, you know, you can do some search stuff to it, but it's mostly like, uh, it's got a little bit of commentary stuff, but it's got maps galores, and it's got Glow. Maps. It's got got maps. Video. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and it's got Charts. And it's got video stuff, and I haven't watched mm-hmm. a lot of videos, so I don't know all that. Um, and it's got timeline stuff. So any verse you're at, you, know, you can click on a verse and say timeline, and it kind of shows you the oh, timeline. Dumb. Obviously not a specific verse, but where that book is or whatever. And so, it basically, the way I, I think about it, the way I would summarize it is, it's um, it's not for super academic research. That's not what they're, what they're going for. Um, but it, but it's, it, it makes for some great quiet times, because you can do some journal stuff and type in and, and, and keep all your notes. Is it free? Um, no, it's 80 bucks. So it's not, yeah. it's not, for Bible software, it's not too much. I think they're gonna come out with other modules and things like that. Is it a CD or an internet it's thing now? Three CDs. What? It's the first time I've used a CD ROM in like a hundred years. Yeah, it's a Yeah, it's almost like, you know, it kind of reminds me of the church. You know, it's like five years behind the times. But, but it's a great but product. But the program itself, the product is really cool. I mean, I think cool. What it's, separates it's, it from other Bible software? It's totally geared. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. We've been saying that for years, right? Me too. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been saying that for years, eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. Your face is right. You just right, right. You can be joined for our new, for our new, for our new team members who haven't listened to the show from the beginning. You don't know that Jen and Matt were dating and dating a long time ago. But we, we argue over just about every topic okay. that none of the humans have. This is true. And a few not known humans also. And so for that, that's not the same. Um, what makes it different? It's it's geared towards a great, having a great quiet time with faith. And I think that it would be cool. good for, a, and I don't know anything about the company or anything, so I'm, I'm not endorsing it because we're involved. Just to be yeah. But I think it would be great for you folks because any page, you know, you can take a snapshot and you can do your page and everything. Cool. It's really easy. So it's like you can look at a verse, type your journal stuff on it, and take a snapshot, you know, or look at a verse and timeline or whatever. So it's pretty cool. Huh. That's it. Pretty I would say with us life. talking about it like this, you ought to get us all free copies. Yeah, get a copy. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you think you give that a lot of airtime. We do. Yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah, way Arguably. too much. So All right, this is from uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brazil. Brazil, call him up. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to skip that one. That was kind of weird. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm all for baking. I'll tell you. <laughs> Since I'm listening to episode 110, I must say, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to read it. All right. Yeah. Episode 110. No, I'm I'm commentarying right now. Okay, you're commentary, sorry. It says, and I must say that Matt is killing it. That's why oh. I didn't want to read it. I didn't want to. Oh, I didn't want to. Today. I'm oh, a little brother. bit off today. Well, a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> great job to all of you. So he doesn't want his, he, we're going to call him Art Vandalay. Killing it like good? Yeah, that's okay. what I'm guessing. Art that's what I'm guessing. Right. Here's a question for you. I have an interview with a church next week, and I'm really excited about the position. However, I'm still employed at my current church. And I don't want to break the news that I'm looking for a different position until I actually have found one. This is my first time searching for a new full-time position while having a full-time position. How do you work to schedule interviews with other churches so you can make the Why? right decision <laughs> to accept or not to accept the position if you uh, if it is offered while still ensuring that your current employer does not know what you're looking for? We get it. We get it. We get it. <laughs> Josh said you tell him you ask for a sabbatical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I whispered that. I didn't, I didn't have the guts to say it. No, yeah, you take a weekend off. You go on vacation. You could take a sabbatical. You 
Yeah, you just very discreetly take it to get on an airplane and go, go to Tennessee or whatever. Discreet, though. Give me some advice for those who are scared now. Be sneaky. You no, know, you, you do not want to tip your hand. You're a lame duck then. You jeopardize your current position. If yeah. God is walking you through this to confirm that you're supposed to stay, yeah. then great. I think, you know, find someone you can confide in and talk to, but probably outside the church. And I think so. Totally oh. sucks, by the way. You have ink all over your hands. And that was one of my favorite pens, too. I actually had two pens on my bathroom counter today. And I thought to myself, I really like that one. I'm going to take that one this today. That is sucks. funny. Well, once you damaged it, it sucks. But I didn't really even do anything to it, and it fell apart. Well, Matt, you destroy everything you touch. If okay, someone, Jana, what were you going to say? Well, I think the idea of, like, moving through the process, like, really being present in how much do I have to tell or how much do I just feel like I have to tell? Like, how much am I... And really thinking through that, like, okay, we're not at a place where we need to tell all of our information right now. We're at a place where we're just exploring. So you don't owe anybody an explanation for exploring, you know? And I just think, sometimes I think we put that pressure on us rather than really what is what is our responsibility, you know? Yeah. Or don't Churches go. do not own people. They don't own their staff, and they don't own their the members that, that show up. And don't go to a church unless you're really serious about it. Make that one of your last steps in your process. Check them out online, read about them, talk to them, do multiple phone interviews. Right. You don't have to go somewhere unless you're about 80% sure. Google wave somebody. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. Check them out hard before you go. Yeah. Well, I would definitely, I'd do a Gmail. I wouldn't use the church email address. Like, I wouldn't oh, do it during fair. the day. I'd work on it at night. Um, you know, dialogue and I get my home number, not my cell phone number, or you know, something like that. Not your office was, number. Not my office number. And and I think you you know you you are a much more attractive hire when you are in a job. Yeah, sure. You know, it, yeah, yeah. Well, and pre- people will appreciate your loyalty to your current situation. I think you yeah. know. Right. If you say please yeah. be discreet, please don't contact anyone yet. Yeah. Until we get further in the process. Well, and and you say I I feel like the Lord is. You know, I mean, you joked about the sabbatical, but you know, the reality is, I I resigned, I resigned prior to the sabbatical, and that's when you know Pastor Rick said, you know, why don't you take a couple months yeah, off and just it. really, really decide that that's your. You know. So, are we giving somebody advice, or now that you've left Starbucks, are we just brainstorming ideas to ourselves? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe oh, both. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's, what the Holy here, here's what I feel, though, as a team leader. When someone on my team says, oh, I'm looking, I'm kind of so I just go, oh, great, three months from today. Three months. Yeah. But see, I, I just instantly go, you're done, then perfect. I don't know, though. The, I do. I my only point back to that is to go, I, I feel like for us, we have enough of a relationship with each other to go, I, God's doing something in my life, and I don't know if that means that I'm moving on. I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but something is stirring in my heart right now, and I feel obligated to pursue some things to look. Yeah. Check out in that way. You would actually think we'd be close enough to do that, but when Matt resigned, oh, he, yeah. he yeah. came right into my office. Chimney <laughs> And he came right into my office. And yeah. I got to quit. I got to quit. <laughs> There's no processing at all. So, Dan, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not I don't think you. I don't know. 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 I'm not sure who. Well, no, I, was, I, was, I, I think somebody on the church players that. on your I'm team, though, could come to you and say, hey, I don't, I don't, uh, I think there's certain people. No, I think there's other players on your team that, I mean, any team that are halfway checked out anyways. And so right. then you're kind of like, okay, you're. Right. You're no, probably moving on. Especially, we would definitely have the freedom to talk about, man, God's doing something in my heart and I'm trying to figure it out. Well, yes, in this context, but in a lot of management scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a leader of a team, you're absolutely, Josh. If, if I'm a leader of a team and you tell me that you're thinking somewhere else, my mind goes. Sure. But, and that's how I'm wired because I've always been. You're either in or out. Well, no, my thing is, I, I feel like one thing I've been good at as a leader is thinking, who's that next person? If so and so leaves, if so and so leaves, if so and so leaves, who's that next person? So yeah. you've just, by tipping your hand to me, you've just raised that that right. person behind you up a little bit, and I'm now starting to, you know. Well, yeah. and, and we I'm start yeah. just personally yeah. in my leadership life, I'm starting to think more like that. Yeah, it's a hard it's a hard thing to develop. I think at least hard for me. Yeah, maybe it's not hard for you guys. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
like we're close enough that we'd be able to talk about that kind of yeah. stuff. Uh, I guess, I guess we won't um, let him know you what? left the church, so just now. <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, Christopher Wallace from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I have a quick question. They may have a long answer. I know that ministry, we wear many hats. I'm a youth pastor here at the church. I'm also over facilities. First Impression Ministry, oh, wow. which is Greeters, Usher, Security Parking. I'm currently helping slash running the children's ministry until we get a full-time kids director. Speaking of leaving your church. Yeah. <laughs> I know everyone has different ways of staying focused on the vision that God has given them, but I am curious as to routines, reminders, and processes that you have that help you stay focused on God's plan for the youth ministry while the church continues to pull you in many di- different directions. I'm in a church of five to 600, and there is nowhere that I'd rather be, so it's not an issue of dissatisfaction for you. That's, that's cool. He says, Doug, uh, you are still the only person who's ever called me Banana Fingers. I met you at the National Youth Ministry Conference this year, and when I shook your hand, you said, Holy Banana Fingers. That's awesome. Did he took a picture of those hands? I don't know. I would know him by the way. you saying that? I think it was next to you. Well, it's a line out of Shallow Hal when he, when he, and the only reason I know this line is because, well, Shallow Hal met Tony Robbins in the, in the, um, in the elevator and he called him Banana Fingers and I met Tony Robbins, shook his hand, he came to our church several years ago. No, but his fingers, I felt like wrapped up to my elbow. So I've just always had that. He's also got a gigantic jaw. Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, speaking of gigantic, what are you thinking about this bet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mean. Oh, well, that's a mean. Yeah, I'm very sorry. He's got a lot of his mind. Yeah, so Chris, let me, let me start with, with this, and you guys dive in. I actually read another one today that made me think of like... Can you signal when we're ready to dive in? Yeah. 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 Your Never. signal for you. <laughs> Um, our producer just left. We do this. Nobody's <laughs> going to show, guys. Yeah, I don't know. I was like, no. He was gone. He just got up and left. Or we're not doing a live show. So, anyway, um, uh, what were we talking about? This guy, this poor guy. No, how Oh, uh, I, I read something today about. Um, uh, another email that came in, and it made me think, and I haven't thought about this chapter in a long time. It's like chapter 20 or something of Purpose Driven Youth Ministry, mm-hmm. where I talk about roles and goals. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. with him yeah. having so many, so many job descriptions, so many areas of responsibilities, he's yeah. got to break those down into roles. Oh, now we have a new one. Oh, wow. so attractive. We're taking too long for Nadine to think of his next appointment. Yeah. But the idea, the concept there is I stole it from um, Stephen Covey in Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where you talk about what are the different roles that you have. You have a ch- this person, you have a children's role, you have a greeter role. Yeah. You know, you yeah. Identify your roles and then list your goals under your roles and look at your week and say, okay, when am I going to be able to pull these? Yeah. pull these off, as opposed to just throwing them all under administration or a general to-do list, yeah. because based on what he's he's saying, his to-do list is very long, yeah, it's gotta be. True. which then all of a sudden you be, you start checking off the easiest ones yeah. and that type of thing. But if he said, okay, I'm a youth pastor, and that's going to get 50% of my time. In the other 50% of my time, right. I oversee the impressions ministry the yeah. children's ministry or whatever. And with that 50% of the time, here are my top priorities that I'm going to be able to yep. do as opposed to, you know, at some point you just feel like I can't do everything. So let me identify what are my roles, what are my goals under those roles, and then take those, your time, and say, here's what I'm going to do that this week. Yep. So I'm not out 10 nights in a row like Josh. Oh, yeah. One more to go. You're now ready to chime in. No, I was thought my third thing would just you said it took your time that you would then take that to the next and apply it to your schedule. That would be the only thing. I would say get out of some of those roles. What about that? Put that in your Franklin Covey. <laughs> well, <laughs> here's the, here's the problem with it is yeah. that anytime you are a productive player at your church, True. you're going to be given more responsibilities. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It is boy, she can do it. So. Let's let's add that to. I mean, we see it 
You see it at yeah. Taliban yeah. all the so time. this morning, you have pulled into a meeting that took away from sermon prep time. Now I'm behind on my youth ministry sermon, but help with this big church thing that I need to do, and da 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 yeah. You are part of the world. And so every every once in a while, <laughs> for the every once in a while you need to you need to do that. But oh, you know, for half today. if you're running so fast and so hard, and your marriage is falling apart, or your kids haven't seen, at some point you need to have a meeting with some whoever you report to and say, "I'm doing the job of you know what what would you like me to? I can't keep running at this pace. What would you like me to give my role?" Well, and even like, what is the plan? Is and there a plan to replace? me at some point in some of these places. And, and your job and your boss would say, you're not really working that hard. Just suck it up. See, I'd summarize all of this. I would, I would Wait, did you get the signal? I thought we agreed that there is no signal. No, the signal is no not talking. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Go ahead. Okay. You done? Did you have anything? Because you really didn't add anything. You said you were going to add something. Go ahead. Add. Are you? Are you going to keep us from that? Now you're going to withhold. Don't pretend like it's your body because I know it won't. Don't take it out on us when we have a team that's out there that's begging for you to say something. Exactly. They know that I'm sick. People are waiting. They know. They know that I'm sick, and so Jana, the second string wisdom person, is. Jana, stop with me tonight. Oh. No, I was going to say one thing. We don't have time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that whole bit was for that line. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nadine's bad. Ah, Nadine's bad. Nadine knows either a phone call or a bowel movement. Phone oh, call. goodness. <laughs> uh, Riley did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Riley really was incredible <laughs> while you were gone. Right, yeah, give, us, give us the one with no, 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 you need to. Don't let your pride get in the way. No, it's not. No, don't let either. Hurry, 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 hurry. You were going to add one more thing. <laughs> no, he was going to summarize. Oh, summarize. No, I'd take all of what you guys said and I would say that. I don't remember what I was going to say. No, that's not what I said. What? Don't worry. Go ahead. Don't worry. No, I, I promise I won't get you off. I just said promise. I, it's the same thing as the window going down. No. <laughs> And you know what? You have so many. You have so many. You have so many memories from when you were in ninth grade that you just carry into our adult relationships. Just because you quit on me without processing it with me. What? What is he trying to get me? Come on, finish up and we're done. I just think that it boils down to asking one question. Something that you can cut off. But is to ask yourself what what must be done, and just prioritizing it is so important. What absolutely has to be done in this area, that area, that area, and maybe some extra areas that you're doing things that don't need to need to be done. But it goes back to prioritizing, figuring out the skills to kind of step underneath the little table and just get into all that stuff. But I think it starts with me saying, what has to happen? And then don't do anything else other than what absolutely has to happen. That was really great for I mean, well, I think part of what that guy's saying, though, <laughs> is that he loves youth ministry. Yeah. Like, that's his first yeah. love, you know? So. But he also loves his church. Right. And he totally does. He loves right. any place else. Right. Yeah. It, it really goes back to that whole concept of roles, yeah. goals, and then really what you're saying is, in, and it's all laid out in the chapter if you want to copy yeah. it. It is prioritizing under the goals. Yeah. It's now you list all your goals under children's role or youth role or greeter yeah. role, and then prioritizing those into A, B, or C. And I got the A's must be done this week. Right. So but so it's not just A's. goals, though. It's tasks. But see, I would say the what must be done yeah. question is the question that that's at the role. Like of your, because yours, you know, your six roles, you would already ask the question: What must be done? I must be a shepherd. I must be a leader. I yeah. must be a creator. So I'm saying at that level, the role, what you must do. Yeah. Well, and then. And then do all these practices. Those other ones, the tasks, yeah. have to get, you know, because you can only do, let's yeah. say I can do 22 tasks this week. Yeah. I, what must be done this week? Yeah. Oh, that's what you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to give you 
15 seconds to be thinking about whether you're in or not. Yeah. We're going to close yeah, it out. Totally. What are you talking about? Um, this is sweet, sweet person sent a question in um, to SYM Podcast at gmail.com. Sent it in Spanish. I'm oh. assuming that's Spanish. Is that Spanish? Yeah. No, it's from Brazil. What? Oh, Portuguese. Portuguese. Oh, Portuguese. <laughs> I can read Portuguese. So anyway, I'm, I'm going, I was ready to delete it going. You don't think I can read Portuguese? Then I see this little translate button. Oh. oh. I click translate. Bam. Look at that. How great is Google? Thank you, Gmail. I know. Someday you'll take over the world, but right now you are awesome. Hello. I am here in Brazil. Lead a group of people. Wonder if you could send me tips on how to lead a group of children. God bless your life hugs. So there's a, it's a little cryptic. It's a little rough. Or it's just flirting with you. One or the Or he. Yeah. But I actually think this is youth group. Yeah. Well, it, was, it, it did it in a push of right, 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 right. I mean, I don't think that asking children. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to say to Thiago Santos that Janet is going to take this and answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank Matt? Patty? I already said I was in. You're in? Sure, why not? Okay, sure. Let's do it. So, Come up with the ground rules. So, here's the next yeah. podcast. We will have it all spelled out what we're going to uh, do. Love it. 12 weeks. That's what Matthew McNutt says. It needs to be 12 weeks it before the. 12 weeks? It needs so to be the starting date. We'll figure it out. The fourth of the whole day. So, <laughs> January. We're, we got, we're getting pretty close to 12 weeks. Oh, yeah, it's got to be. So, okay. 12 weeks. I can do a lot of damage in 12 weeks. Uh, it's a lot of salad bars. <laughs> Don't play with my rolls. I uh, want the gold. It <laughs> <laughs> must be done. It must be done. Like really oh. Seriously. Oh, she looks great. Inside of a rabbit, she does look great. I mean, she does love him. Yeah, she is. She is it. Because it's worth no point. She's a point watcher. She's a weight yeah, watcher. Yeah, you yeah. sell her, right? Is it selling her the same thing? That's a negative food. A negative food? So you get to add ice cream? Yeah. Yeah, it burns more calories than it gives you. That's awesome. Celery and hickory. Yeah. Yeah, I don't that's know. One more, too. I'm sure there's a nutrition name for it. Yeah. Negative. Anyone who knows? Yeah, I wouldn't know. All right. Are we ready to not? Cause we have many more questions. Maybe. We're just going to need yeah. to next week. Let's make it as yes. we hit end. Let's, the four of us, stay here and really sign up for uh, sign up for next week. All right. Bye. Team, How come you don't goodbye. Come on, Banana. Thank you.